Okay, let's do a little bit of a follow-up here, a follow-up to the conversation. So, Fred and Jane, they're having a disagreement. That's normally what we'd call it. Maybe you'd even call it a fight if they start yelling at each other or get angry. I think it's easy to get frustrated. But in reality, they're just negotiating. So this is a kind of negotiation. Negotiation has some key parts we want to remember. Let's look at what those key parts are. They include goals, strategies, issues, and planning. So when you have a negotiation, it's important to remember that you have some goals, you have some strategies, you have some issues, you have some planning. Now we just saw Fred and Jane. Did they have goals? Mm, kind of. Fred wanted to go overseas, Jane wanted to go to Disneyland, so that's kind of their goal. And remember their, another goal was they want to have a vacation together with the family, so, so again, that's kind of a goal. But then did they have a plan? Did they have a strategy? They didn't have those things. Uh, in fact, they were a little bit just making things up as they went along. Did they have an issue that was very clear? Mm, not really, no. So what happens is they're just kind of talking. And that's not a good way to negotiate because it means how are you going to win? This is a key point to negotiation that we're going to learn about in a minute. How do you know if you win or lose? Well, you begin with having goals, strategies, issues, and planning. Okay, let's take a look at the parts of a negotiation that we just mentioned, but let's look a little bit deeper into how they fit together in a, into a kind of a chain of negotiation. Okay, what we can look at here is the very first part of the negotiation, which are the, the goals. And then after the goals, you need to work on the strategy. And after the strategy, you need to work on the issues. And after the issues, you need to work on the planning. So these four parts kind of fit together before your negotiation begins, not during your negotiation. This is not, this is not like steps to a negotiation. These are actually all inside every negotiation. At any time, these are all inside. So you've got your goals, your strategy, your issues, your planning. This is all inside of a negotiation. Before your negotiation begins, however, if you want to increase your chance to win, to do better, before the negotiation, you should think, what are my goals? What are my strategies? What are my issues that are important to me? And what is my plan to win this negotiation, or at least to get what I want, which is really the key point to every negotiation, to get what your goals are. So every negotiation has these parts. Every, every negotiation has goals, strategies, issues, and planning, but some people don't do them well, some people try to ignore them. They don't make a plan. They just start talking. Maybe that's kind of their plan to make people confused by just talking a lot. But you win your negotiation by doing these better. So in this unit, we're going to focus on how do we do these better. And in later units, we're going to focus on each one in detail to show you how to do that. Okay, you have some exercises in the book, and I'd like you to go ahead and look at those exercises, give them a try. These exercises aren't really hard. Uh, I didn't make the exercises to make it hard for you. The goal is not to be hard. The goal, in fact, is it's not to take a test or to get the right answer. The goal is to help you think about these ideas for a negotiation. Why is this important? Because when you negotiate, it's really key to get your mind in the right mm, perspective, to get your mind in the right situation so that you can win. That's a key point, so that you can win. So these exercises are made to help you get ready to get your head in the right space, to get thinking in the right direction, and to remember some of the words. It's not hard, it's easy, but I want you to start thinking this way. So. Do some of these fill in the gap exercises, which include these gap exercises. Go ahead and write up a short answer to uh, some of these topics on the next page, like one, two, three, and four down there. Uh, one, two, three, actually, right? And I want you to begin to think about negotiation. 
Now before I let you go then, let me go ahead and introduce a little bit more about why we should begin to think this way. Why, for example, pull up my slide here. Okay. Why should we focus on this part here? Why, why are the parts of a negotiation so important? Why do we need to pay attention to these parts? Well, let me begin by maybe just reminding you of some negotiations you've seen before. Maybe you've gone to the night market with your mother or father or aunt. Maybe you've gone to the night market with some friends. Maybe you've bought something or you're with somebody who bought something. You saw them negotiate really hard. They really focused. They really argue what you thought maybe was arguing but actually it was negotiation for a long time now the question is if you do go negotiate how do you know that you're getting something you want how do you know that you win let's say I go to the night market and I want to buy this uh, cup here and I like this cup and and so I ask the person in the market uh, you know what does this cup do and he says well this cup is great he tells me the features it can keep the hot tea hot and it can keep the cold water cold and it has a top and it has a really good handle and it can last a long time. And I say, how much is this cup, sir? And he says, this cup is maybe 100 NT dollars. And so now I need to think, uh, do I want to pay 100 or do I want to negotiate a different price? Of course, if I can negotiate a different price, what does that mean? If I negotiate a price of 80, then I save 20 and that person was selling to me, does he lose 20? Well, he certainly makes 20 less than he would have made if I paid 100, right? If I paid 100 for this cup, the seller makes 100, the buyer spends 100. If I pay 80, the buyer spends 80, and the seller makes 80. 80 is 20 less, but does he lose 20, right? You see, I don't know, because I'm not the seller. I don't know. We don't know the price. We don't know the cost right so what happens when you negotiate in the night market like that if you say something like uh, I'll give you 80 very often what does the salesperson say he says huh it cost me 100 you'd make me lose 20 I would lose 20 this is a very normal thing to say right and then you say oh I'm sorry I don't want you to lose money right do they really lose money well we don't know this is a key part of negotiation. The secret information is secret. We, we really don't know. I guess we can check. We could go call up the supplier and ask how much one buys. One, if one wants to buy this from the supplier, how much is it? Then we would know. But we, we usually don't do that and we don't know. So I have no way to know if the seller is going to really lose money. But I do know, me, the buyer, if I pay 80 or I pay 100, the difference is 20 for sure. Now then the next question becomes, what's the value of this cup to me? What do I think I get from this cup? Is it worth keeping my tea hot? Is that worth 100? Or is it worth 80? Or is it worth 50? Now here's where we begin to look at these ideas of the goals, the strategies, the issues, and the planning. Because if I think about it and I say, well, you know, I don't know, I don't care. I just want to pay less. Less is better, right? Of course, if you could give me this cup for free, that would be best. I don't think he's going to give me the cup for free, but that would be best. And so what do I do? I begin to negotiate, or in Taiwan we say, sa jia, right? Cut down the price. Argue with the price, right? And then sometimes people give you a rule of thumb, like, People say if you travel to China and you negotiate, always cut the price in half. Begin at half. Well, what, what I'm saying is, how much is this cup worth to me? Now, if I say 100, you know, mm, I have another cup. It's okay. It's not as good as this cup, maybe. It doesn't really keep my tea warm. So maybe mm, 100's, 100's a little bit too much. If it's 100, I'll just keep my other cup. I don't need it. 
Now, if I want 80 and I say 80, yes, 80 is worth it. I'm willing to pay 80 because I think keeping my tea warm is worth the 80 and my other cup doesn't work that good. So 80 is my goal. Now, if my goal is 80 and then I say, okay, sir, you say 100, I'll give you 80. And then the salesperson says 80, okay, sold. What's your first reaction? Your first reaction is, huh, I should have said 60. I should have said 60, I said 80, but he gave it to me right away. I, obviously I paid too much. So here we run into the key point of negotiation. Of course you can always feel better if you get a lower price. And of course you will feel better if you get something for less and the seller makes less money, of course. And when the seller agrees very quickly, you say, ah, oh, I should not have done that. Why? Because the, the seller made more than he expected. He was happy to make that. I could, have, I could have made the price lower and he would have not been so happy and I would be more happy. So that always happens. That's always true. Thus the problem in negotiation is how do you know if you win or lose? How do you know if you did a good job or a bad job? If you're just waiting for the seller to say, oh, okay, I'll give it to you and that's a bad job, then you'll feel bad. But what about the cup? Does the cup do what you want? Does the cup do what you need? Does this cup keep my tea hot and is that worth $80 to me? If that's worth $80 and the salesperson sold it to me for 80, what I wanted was 80, then actually I should think, good, I got what I wanted. It's worth 80 to me for this cup. The thing I get keeping my tea warm better than my old cup, that is worth 80 to me. If that's worth 80 to me, then I should feel I've won. I've been victorious. I've done a good job. My negotiation is successful. Okay, well, if I don't think 80, I just think cut the price, cut the price, cut the price. How do I know I win? Well, I probably never know I win. Unless I get the cup for a zero, which is impossible, I'm always gonna think, oh, I should have negotiated more. If I get the price down to 80 and I keep pushing, no, 70, and I keep pushing, no, 60, and maybe he sells it to me for 60, I'm still gonna say, oh, I should have held out longer. I should have cut that price more. I should have gone for 40, right? So, in negotiation, the very beginning of a negotiation, we don't really know what we want. That's not good. And at the end of a negotiation, we don't know, did we win or did we lose? Did I do, did I do good or did I do bad? Do I need to improve or should I just keep doing it this way? On the other hand, at the beginning of a negotiation, if you set your goal clearly, what is the value to me? How much do I want to pay to get what I get from this? Then you negotiate and then you get it. If you get it, you can say, I did a good job or I did a bad job. If my value is 80 and I negotiate and the salesperson only goes down to 90, then I say, that's it. I don't want it because if I pay 90, that is more than my value. If he goes down to 80, then I got what I wanted. If the next person comes and they negotiate behind me and they get it for 70, I should still think my goal was 80, I got it for 80. Now maybe in the future, maybe in the future when I negotiate another time, I need to consider the value again carefully. Maybe I thought the value was more than it's worth to me. But for now, if I thought it was 80 and I get 80, then that's my goal. So in negotiation, it's important to think beforehand. What are your goals, strategies, issues, and then that will help you come up with your planning, to make a plan. If you have all of these together well thought out, because you always have these in a negotiation, but maybe you don't think about it, maybe you don't do it well, maybe you try to ignore it, maybe you're just always trying to go for zero, which is impossible. Lower, lower is better, better. Uh, I guess so, but what about your time? What about your energy? And what about the thing you want to get? 
So maybe I argue and I just keep saying lower, lower, 70, 70. And the man says, no, I won't give it to you for 70. And then what happens? I have to go home and I have to use my old cup. And then I have to suffer another week or two weeks or three weeks using my old cup that doesn't keep my tea warm. And then I say, oh, that really makes me angry. I went there, I spent the time, I came back, I got to use this old cup. And now I feel it was worth 80 instead of fighting for 70. I should have just paid 80. I think you have that experience too, don't you? I think we have both those experiences, everybody. You go somewhere, you bargain, the seller says, okay, I'll give it to you, and you say, oh, I bargained, I gave up too fast, I bargained too too easily, I should have fought more. Or the other hand, where you bargain really hard and then you go home, you don't buy it, and then you keep regretting, oh, I should have bought it, and I wasted time there, I gotta go back again, and I feel that it, I should have just bought it for the other price. So. Goals, strategy, issues, and planning. This is what I want you to begin to think about in this class. Don't just go to a strategy cold and begin. No. Think beforehand. Right? Number one, you must have something in common. He has a cup. I want a cup. Number two, you have to have something that's different. I want to pay 80. He wants me to pay 100. Now you begin. Now I think. What are my goals? What are my strategies? What are my issues? What's my plan? Then I execute. When I'm done, I can go back and say, did I get my goals? If I got my goals, then that is a success. If I miss my goals, how much did I miss by? How much did I do that's not good? Did I miss it by 20%? Did I miss it by 50%? Did I miss it by 10%, 2%? And then I can judge it. Okay, so that's our beginning of this class. I want you to begin thinking that way. Thinking of goals. Let's start with goals. How about that? That's really a good idea. Clear, clear goals. Not just cut the price, cut the price, cut the price. Okay, see you next time in our negotiation class.